Hello, Mina. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, too. <laughs> it's a pleasure for me, too. Thank you. So uh, we got connected through Instagram, and I was very interested in your post because I could feel your love for art. You're a writer, and you're also a mm, very hardworking person as a um, PhD, <laughs> as a forensic linguist, and also you have a, a discourse analyst PhD degree. I, so, in fact, I don't have it already. I mm -hmm. am uh, in the process of uh, obtaining this. I'm in the second year of PhD. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. Very happy for you. So, you. <laughs> so um, to summarize again, you're a published book writer, forensic linguist, and philologist. Um, and I'm really impressed. So can you share about what you do with our viewers? Yes. Uh, actually, I want to talk a little bit about uh, my book, okay? Oh, sure. Uh, mm. It's fantasy. It's a fantasy book. Mm. Uh, it is uh, magic realism. Uh, what I did is mm. connecting uh, the reality, the world outside, uh, with uh, hidden meanings uh, in a symbolic uh, world, okay? That is full of magic, that is full of possibilities. And it actually, it's the first book of a trilogy. There will be really? two more. Yes, there will be two more in the same pattern. Uh, and uh, I, I wait to see the response from the public so that maybe it will continue. I, I don't know. The fantasy readers uh, really uh, follow what they love because uh, above all, it's fantasy, okay? <laughs> it's uh, something we create. And it's mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's an allegory, and it's I like to use symbolism in literature to uh, convey the meanings I, I want to talk about this world, okay, outside and around mm -hmm. us. But it's sometimes it's difficult to to see to say the things I want to say uh, in a bold way, very clearly. For me, it's more uh, it's easier to to hide them mm -hmm. through people through scenery through instances through the difficulties uh, that my heroes uh, uh, pass okay oh very interesting so you're saying it's easy for the meanings to be hidden because of the yes. environment oh and you want to kind of pull it out from the hidden sites for us to be able to you know kind of yes, feel yes. it mm. it's wow, open for interpretation uh, it's mm. open to every reader to understand by mm -hmm. his own mind or her uh, own mind and uh, heart. Oh. It's open for everyone, you know. Sure, sure. And I, I saw the book cover on your Instagram. It's really, really nice. You could feel the, yeah. mm, the atmosphere of the book, but I understand it's still not in English. Is, is that correct or is it? No, no uh, unfortunately. Uh, it's uh, still in Greek, but mm. uh, we are going to discuss it uh, for, uh, with the publishing uh, house of me because it's like a house uh, uh, for me now. I, I have a very great uh, connection and uh, uh, co-working with my publisher, so it's very important for one uh, person that writes literature to actually have uh, someone who understands and knows mm. uh, to, to, I don't know, to make the best of each uh, book. Sure, sure. Wow. So I really look forward to reading it in English some days. Probably <laughs> I will be happy for soon. that too. Right, right? So yeah, I'll yeah, keep I looking um, about your book. So I'll know as soon as it's published in English. I really want to read it. Yeah. Now that I, I hope for that too, <laughs> I, I like mystery, and that's uh, what mm -hmm. uh, I am going to to do now is to convey those two, you know, the world and mystery, and that's why I choose forensic linguistics <laughs> mm -hmm. for uh, for a field to, to to research at first because it has a lot of mystery, as we can see. Uh, actually, sure. yes. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the the process of um, solving a puzzle. Mm. 
but uh, in it's, it, uh, there are also hidden meanings uh, in what we research mm. because it has to do with crime it has to do with law processes uh, it has to do with the warnings for the people to to make sure they understood what the police say because uh, actually we, we have to do with people that maybe are foreigners maybe do not uh, have as a mother tongue Greek. You know, if uh, one forensic linguist uh, tries to uh, be occupied here in Greece, mm. um, it's, uh, it's vital for us to make sure, uh, that, uh, put all our effort in a good translation oh. at first. Mm. We have so the part of translation, of communication. Sure. Second, we have to um, decipher hidden meanings or uh, words that cannot be read. Uh, maybe there a hundred, uh, maybe we have a handwritten letter. Maybe we have a ransom letter. Maybe we mm. have a suicide note. Mm. And we have to understand who wrote those and why and in what point they are now. I mean, uh, if uh, someone um, kidnapped a person, okay, mm. and writes a letter mm. to us uh, about some money, not some, just some. Maybe uh, this has uh, this involves a lot of amount uh, of mm. money, as we can understand. Uh, we have to decipher the letter to see if the letter was uh, written beforehand, mm. before the kidnapping, okay, if. Um, the letter was uh, written after the kidnapping and what is the intention of the possible murderer okay mm -hmm. uh, do we have to do with murder do is there is there any uh, danger for the victim actually so uh, this is one point and, and, and to say the truth i am more interested in this the authorship identification this is a uh, a field that I would like to uh, be specialized on as w I move forward. Oh, I, uh, I would like to, to finish first my PhD. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. then I, I am interested in a postdoc oh. position, maybe, it, oh. but specialized. Mm -hmm. And there are a few universities um, in the world that uh, have to do with forensic linguistics. Mm -hmm. The main point of those uh, universities are to train you first as a linguist. Oh. And so um, it, is, uh, it is a long road ahead, I know, mm -hmm. for someone who wants to be occupied with this, because uh, it has many difficulties. Uh, at first, I, I would like to point something. We know that linguistics uh, have two branches. Um, have two branches, uh, the applied and the theoretical. Mm. Uh, one linguist should move from theoretical and tries all the methods uh, and models to apply to the uh, applied linguistics. Mm -hmm. And forensic linguistics are one field of applied linguistics. So anyway, uh, the, the linguist has to move already uh, through a long road to mm -hmm. reach one of the fields of applied linguistics because they mm. want a, a combination of methods sure. and you may know that very well if <laughs> i'm not wrong okay <laughs> <laughs> linguistics yes i i believe and i understand is a very very difficult and in-depth field but you're also working in this discourse analyst PhD degree. How does it connect with your own work? And also you mentioned on uh, one, one of your posts that forensic linguistics is not really well known in your country. And it's not either in, in my side of the world. So yeah. can you explain what the forensic linguistics field uh, does for solving crimes? Is it, is it correct that it helps solving crimes? Yes. You just mentioned some of it, but can you... Give us a little bit more explanation. Uh, I would like to give an example. Mm. Um, when in 1968, uh, John uh, Zwagwick uh, actually invited, uh, uh, in, invented, uh, actually, the mm. word, the term mm. forensic linguistics, uh, he had to do with a crime that it could be solved 
through it. And it oh wasn't uh, really known back then. And it's still not known in countries that do not let linguists um, research uh, openly mm. uh, texts of law uh, processes, which uh, means that if I want to research, uh, to, to be involved in a case in Greece, mm. I have to know a lawyer, someone to, 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 uh, who works over a case, mm. and uh, then if he lets me, and if I got permission to actually research. So, what we, uh, what is left here in Greece for us to research openly is actually social media, oh. is internet. And this is why I focused my research mm. in something as hate comments on social media, on Instagram and oh, YouTube. Very interesting. <laughs> that is actually what I study. Uh, a discourse analysis uh, with models on uh, uh, hate, uh, hate comments. Mm. As we all know, there are plenty mm. of them mm. in the internet. Mm. And especially in those two platforms, YouTube and Instagram. And uh, the point is, where's the content, the content of those platforms uh, is really easy to be discussed and mm. uh, it's easy to have uh, for us uh, uh, we, we can have an opinion easily sure. either bad or good so mm. uh, why do not express it openly yeah mm. and that's what uh, makes uh, to the hate comments to be created so mm. uh, the thing is I research uh, the pragma dialectical theory of mm. Van Emmeren and Grotestorts, and uh, I researched the um, hypertexts uh, of those uh, those hate comments. How do they combine with each other? Mm -hmm. And then I apply the models of um, uh, hate speech mm. and impoliteness from uh, the models of Kulpepe. And so I believe that is a very um, this approach will help us understand more about hate comments in a linguistical way. Mm. Wow, very very interesting. So there must be some very very um, like more in depth discussions to be going on. But yeah, that would be whole other topic for another long discussion so i'll just cut to my next question which would be i i was really happy to see your love and affection appreciation toward art too yeah. so you were sharing this picture of kandinsky who i admire too um like in terms of his art i don't know about other things but i really appreciate his art so any other artists you want to share or any other hobbies or how did you get to like you write but you do love art do you paint yourself or how did you get to grow your affection toward art i understand your question okay i used to paint and oh. i um, but this is something I did uh, only as a hobby. It's nothing that I would like to share, sure. you know, with the world and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I did was to paint the um, cover of my father's book uh, when oh. I was 15. And this is, this is published, but it's the only oh, work wow. of me. Oh. Yeah, that is published. And, uh, but it doesn't uh, matter for me to continue sharing something like that i would like to picture emotions and and things of the world through uh, literature that's mm -hmm. only that's the only thing uh, as far uh, as for kandinsky i really like him mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i like abstract art sure. and for me this has a mystery as you can see i like everything that has a mystery yes yes so i can yes. easily assume why you yes like kandinsky mm -mm -mm. And uh, for me, uh, it's like the, the cubism, the, the abstract art mm -hmm. uh, has a lot to offer because it's also open to interpretation for mm -hmm. who, for, for the viewer, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, he or she who admires uh, art. And for me, I mean, they, they were all uh, in, in, a, in a, they lived in an era where the, uh, 
they wanted to to picture uh, strong emotions throughout. Okay, mm. they uh, lived. Uh, they they had the terror around them and in them. And mm. for me, uh, I mean, I would say something that it might. Um, I don't know. I created a little bit of trouble. I don't like Picasso. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Picasso is a, is a whole other like discussion. Picasso. Yes, he's different. Like he's not an abstract. Artist per se, so it's really different from Kandinsky's paintings. Right. Yes, mm. and uh, I mean I like from uh, the Greek uh, artist uh, Nikos Kandikiriakos Gikas, who oh. said that he um, actually was uh, inf influenced somehow by Picasso. But for me, Picasso is not originally an abstract artist. He tried to put cubism into art, oh. into his art. Um, for me, uh, when I see originally cubism, uh, this abstractness, I admire it. Mm, sure. So can you, it, it's, if it's okay, can you spell just the first name of the Greek artist you just mentioned? Uh, I want to look that up. Okay, maybe this will be more easier if I write it, uh, I don't know, in a post. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, I'll, I'll, yes. I, um, I I'll look that up after about, your post I someday. Post, uh, I'm sorry. I will post something about uh, his uh, paintings because I like very it. Very uh, interesting. Also. Okay. Okay. I very much look forward to it. So any last comments for students or any other viewers who would like to know more about forensic linguistics? It's a very new field for us, most of us. So uh, we are relying uh, on you, relying on you for you know, more okay. knowledge, good knowledge for it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, too. Uh, my last advice uh, mm -hmm. to close uh, this beautiful interview, mm -hmm. and uh, I hope we'll be in touch, mm -hmm. uh, because I really like uh, your place and I would like to visit. Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> oh, like that would be to... great, actually. Really, really. I mean, I yeah, mean yeah, it, of course, so. <laughs> of course. Uh, so I would like to say it has a lot of work. It has a uh, a lot of um i don't know you have to be devoted you have to be I'm diligent sure. yeah. and uh, yeah. of course uh, a lot of, a lot of study over it mm. yeah sure yes <laughs> dedication is the key like it it'll take a lot of time i can only e easily imagine because of the no amount of no knowledge you should have as a professional linguist um yeah in terms of this whole new area uh, it's it's not new you were mentioning that it um came to light in 1950s did you say but yeah it's it's pretty new yeah. too so thank you again for your time mina i okay, will see you, you again on instagram okay okay thank have you. a good day bye bye, -bye.